Okay, but I'm already live. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. Hey, who do we got in here? We got somebody, don't we? Pop in and say hey. All right, we got some people here. Um, pop in and say hey in the comments. Hey, David Condor, what's going on? So we got some 14C28 in here that we are going to cut up a crap load of cardboard with while we hang out and shoot the shit. Um we've done d2 we've done 3cr13 we've done vintage 440 suave what's up man i'm doing good we're uh, going in on this thing and so this thing is a knife i don't like all that much but it's got 14c28 in and uh this is a nice flat grind into the the fuller so this is gonna slice really really good but uh yeah i'm doing all right um it would be a nice knife. However, they got so many things wrong on it. Um, one of my biggest complaints here is you've got this front flipper and this back flipper. And if you, it's a stiff detent too. So if you pop down on this, it's hard to get your finger out of the way before it gets smashed right here. And it is so painful. Using the front flipper sucks. Using the thumb hole sucks. So we're going to beat on it. But first things first. Oh, yeah. So we've had some cutters and we've had some stuff like that, but we haven't had one that is doing uh, this good right out of the box. And let's take a look at the edge before we start tearing it up. Yeah, so the edge is stellar. Like the edge on this is absolutely stellar. And that's part of the thing, like I love how this knife looks. But the other thing that I had going on with it is I'll carry stuff in the waistband to free up pocket space. This thing caused un ungodly amounts of friction and really bad hot spots. And even in my pocket, it was still not comfortable. So I love how it looks. I love the idea, but God, I got so many things wrong. And I, I like Sativian quite a bit. Like Sativian does have some good stuff out there. They just missed the mark on this one so bad. Oh, that is such a nice cut. Um, I buy my knives mostly on Amazon. If there's something I can't get on Amazon, then I'll go to Blade HQ or Knife Network. Uh, if you're not familiar with Midway USA, uh, Midway USA does a lot of stuff on sale, and you can find some really good stuff there at a really steep discount. Um, like I got, oh yeah, my SOG Flash A2 for like uh, 40 bucks. Flash AT. It's like a 75, 80 dollar knife that I got for 40 bucks. And depending on who it is, sometimes I'll buy from people I know. But for the most part, like, you know, most of my stuff is $50 or less, so there's no point in buying them used. And not many people are really selling that kind of knife used either. Oh, this thing slices so good. So we'll normally push about an hour of cutting, and then we'll check the edge, and then give it another hour and check the edge, and so forth. Um, but I, I did think of a good question for you guys. Oh, my God, that is such a nice cut. Oh, dear God. Um, uh, a good question for everybody. 
Uh, what are some movies you guys have seen a whole bunch of times? Like, I mean, a whole bunch. Because, like, that's part of the fun here. Um, you know, if you're new, is uh, you know, the conversation will go other places. You know, we're not necessarily worried so much about, you know, there's a lot of knife talk. Don't get me wrong, but the other half of the fun is just shooting the shit. I've seen that one a few times. Um, I will say probably <clears throat> one of the ones that I've seen the most times that I just thought about for the first time in forever was Rocky Horror Picture Show. Like, I used to be a really, really, really big Rocky Horror Picture Show dork. And I had some uh, friends that were into it. You know... <sighs> I went in on Inglorious Bastards, and I think my real my expectations weren't totally realistic. It's like I was thinking it was going to be two hours of basically Nazis getting killed in incredibly violent ways, and they opened with that, which was good. But then it just kind of tapered off into stuff where it's like suspense doesn't do it for me. Um, I'm not sure why. Uh, like tons of suspense, I really have a hard time sitting through. Um, but yeah. Um, I know one of the ones I've seen about a million times now is The Crow. Like, The Crow is one of the best movies ever made. Um, I think for me, my personal my personal top uh, first place is a two-way tie between The Crow and Terminator 2. I mean, the, the Crow is an amazing movie if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, it's like a buddy of mine asked on uh, Facebook and, uh, you know, he's, he's getting an uh, audience, you know, engagement for the page for his Twitch channel. And, uh, the list that I rattled off was getting longer and longer and longer. And I was having a harder and harder time thinking of other stuff that I'd seen about a million times. Like if you're old enough, the last unicorn that is an amazing animated movie from back in the day. And that's back when uh, animated kids' movies could be really, really dark and get away with it. Well, thank you, David. Greatly appreciated. Hopefully you enjoy what's happening here. Um, I'm, I'm kind of filling time right now. So um, something that happened recently was uh, Timu Geddon uh, for 10 weeks. And I mean, 10 straight weeks, I carried uh, knives that came from Timu and uh, kind of put them head to head to see which one was the best in the crowd. And uh, right now I'm going through the backlog of knives that came in. Um, knives that came in while I was doing that. So I'm working my way through those and then I'm going to figure out what to do next. Um, so Super Budget Showdown, that was uh, the Timu season. Um, the first season was like wherever I could find them, but the knives are all $15 or less. So uh, we ha I have fun with that one. Um, hopefully everybody has fun watching to see what happens. Um, where the last eagle flies. I haven't seen that one. That name doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, like, I remember way back in the day when, like, stuff for kids could be so damn dark and no one cared. Like, uh, there was a cartoon. It was uh, Ghostbusters, not... You had the real Ghostbusters, which was uh, based on the movies. But Ghostbusters, um, I think, came out before that. And that was based on an old TV show, um, an old black and white show, I believe. And that shit was dark, man. It was crazy. You know. Oh, okay. I haven't seen it in forever, so that uh that got lost on me. I'm sorry. Um, like I sat my kids down and made them watch it. You know, I, hey, beautiful. Um, the Never Ending Story. I need to sit down and watch that all the way through in one sitting. Um, I've cat I've caught parts of it. So, like, I've seen the whole movie in chunks on TBS because I always caught it, like, partway through. But TBS was our, uh, 
Uh, believe me, I, I don't have the academic credentials to pass for a nerd, so I fall into the dork slash geek category. But, uh, yeah, TBS, Turner Broadcasting, um, Channel 17 in my area. Um, like, you'd occasionally see a movie like The Last Unicorn or something. But for the longest time, they'd run movies back to back. All right, man. I appreciate you subbing. Have a good stream. We're going to be here for a while. I got to keep myself awake till 2 a.m. So we're here until I get sick and tired of cutting. But thank you again. But, you know, for the longest time, TBS would run the same movie back to back. And they only had, like, they'd pick three, like, three movies for a couple of weeks and just run them back to back more than once a day. So, like, you can sit there and watch Dumb and Dumber like four times in the same afternoon on TBS. So, I would I would sit there and I would watch Dumb and Dumber the whole way through, like back to back. That was back when Papa John's pizza was still good and not racist. Um, what else? What else is there? So it's, it's not something that, you know, that I'm really uh, ashamed of sharing about, but at one point I had to get clean and an unexpected side effect of that process was I slept maybe 20 to 30 minutes a night for 62 straight days. So every night while I was awake, sitting there only sleeping for about 20 minutes, I would watch I Am Legend and then I would watch uh, 300 and then I would pick something out. And a lot of times it wound up being Watchmen. So I have seen those movies. I know two of those specifically. Um, it'd be I Am Legend, um, Hancock, 300, um, and a lot of times Watchmen. So I've seen those things. All right, Swave. But yeah, those things I've seen ooh, at least 60 times. Which, I've gone back, I've watched Hancock again not too long ago. Um, I haven't seen I Am Legend in years now. Um, I've seen Watchmen more recently than that, although that's also been a long time. Um, uh, what else? Like, Book, what's up, man? Um, yeah, I was at work until 3 o'clock. Um, that's its own story. But I figure later in the afternoon on a Saturday, people are able to show up. Punisher! Yeah, no, we're talking about movies that you've seen a whole bunch of times. So we've covered The Last Unicorn. We've covered Rocky Horror Picture Show, I Am Legend, 300, uh, Hancock, and Watchmen so far. Um, let's like say in uh, I Am Legend and uh, Hancock, I've seen those about 60 times. 300, probably more than 60 now. Um Watchmen, 30, 40 times at least. I've seen Blazing Saddles a couple of times. Um, no one I knew had a copy of it, so I had to watch it on um, just whatever it was being broadcast on. <laughs> uh, Zombieland deserves multiple watches, and the first Matrix is fire. I've seen that a couple of times. Um, what the hell was I going to mention? Uh, the heavy metal animated movie from the early 80s, late 70s. That thing still holds up today. It's still good today. And in case y'all didn't know, we're going in on the Sativian right here that I don't like a whole lot. But 14C28N. I've seen Army of Darkness like once, years and years ago. And again, like nobody had a copy of it, so I never saw it again. Um, Bronson, have you seen Bronson? Tom Hardy, like one of Tom Hardy's older movies. That is one movie I will die on a hill for. That movie is fucking amazing. Chris Crypto Life, what's happening, man? So we are making some cardboard boxes. 
Well, you're making some cardboard boxes. Regret every life choice they ever made. Um, what do I want to cut up next? I've got a box from Icelandic Glacial. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Every opening mechanism on this thing sucks. Like, I don't know how this one got out the door like this. Now, that being said, the geometry on this blade is fantastic. This is one of the easiest cutters we've had so far. This thing slices so good. Yeah, and there's so much I like about it, and they got so many things wrong in one go. Like, the ergos aren't great, the opening mechanisms aren't great, and nothing. And I mean, if, if they hadn't messed all that up, this would be a fantastic knife. It's like... If they'd done everything different except this blade shape, it'd be great. Yeah, Sativian does good stuff. I don't know how this one got out the door like this. I'm guessing they were banking on guys like me and gas station knife guys picking it up because it looks cool. I don't know how someone designed it with such bad ergos. Bye, beautiful. I will see you in a bit. Um, snap. What else was I going to mention that I've seen a bunch of times? Uh, 13 Ghosts. It does scream gas station special, but it also screams like higher quality gas station special. Like if, if they were going to have a special case for nicer stuff, this would be in it. I have watched Star Wars a few times. I bought the first trilogy and the second trilogy on DVD and sat there with the kids and made sure they saw all of them. Um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy of... Oh, God, Back to the Future. Holy shit. Blades tonight, what's up? Um, never put the words she, too, and thick in the same sentence together. Use anything else to describe it. But she, too, thick, that's not an acceptable statement. That's like, that's like saying there's too much ass or too much tits. No, that's not possible. Them legs better be looking like turkey legs. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, Die Hard I've seen a bunch of times. Yeah, I, I'm counting it as a Christmas movie. Um, phew, What the hell? Ghostbusters, I've seen that a bunch of times. Fucking Back to the Future, absolutely. Um, for a while there, about once a year, I'd sit there and watch all three Back to the Future movies in one go. Um, I've seen Snatch a few times, and the movie too. I can't pick a favorite Back to the Future, I'll be honest. Like, they're all good for different reasons. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Use. I've seen those a bunch of damn times. Um, the third one I saw once. I was a kid, and I liked it then. I don't know if I'd like it now. But I do like the whole time travel to medieval Japan thing going on there. That was a really good idea. Straight up, that was a good idea. I've seen Aliens, like Alien, a couple of times. Um, that one just wasn't my jam. Like, it's again, like, doing just straight up raw tension for that long doesn't really do it for me. Um, probably the closest to doing a movie full of a... a bro! There was a dollar theater next to my house when I was a kid. And like socially, I wasn't doing so hot. Um, I was a walking bullseye and an abuse sponge. So life sucked. I had a bunch of the toys. I 
the van should be around here somewhere. My kids played with that more than anything else they had for the longest time. But uh, there was a dollar theater, and like that was a safe place to go chill. And they had Groundhog Day, so I'd watch it like three, four times a day, just enjoying being in the theater and being kind of safe and at peace. So I've seen that one, God knows how many times. I think for a little while, I could basically go with the movie word for word, like I knew the whole script. But yeah, I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Actually, during my stoner days, I had a Shredder action figure, one of the old ones. And you can pose him where he is holding his hand like that in front of his face. So I rolled a small joint for him, and he was holding a real joint in his hand like that for years. I've seen Bueller's once, I think. I think I saw that once all the way through. Like, I sat down. I was like, I got to see if this is good. It was pretty good. Um, but I think the closest thing to, like, a slow burn tension movie, uh, I've seen Spaceballs quite a few times. Um, but, like, a, a slower moving movie, uh, I sat down with my kid and watched The People Under the Stairs um, not that long ago. I hadn't seen that in forever. That, that was such a badass movie. Just... Start to finish, badass movie. Uh, my brother-in-law, or, or my my brother-in-law from my first marriage, I should say, um, he really got into the Thirteenth Warrior with Antonio Banderas. Whenever that hit VHS. So I'd come home, like, we we were staying at uh, my former mother-in-law's house, like, all of us together, me, him, um, my ex-wife, her sister. And so every day I'd come in from work or whatever I was doing, you'd be sitting there watching The 13th Warrior. I mean, he ran ruts through that thing. Wasn't a bad movie. Like, I did like it, but, whoo, boy. Um, he'd watch that. He really liked The Chronicles of Riddick, so we'd sit there and watch that. Um... What else? He liked, he really liked uh, Die Hard and all that stuff too. At one point I had uh, the the box set of Die Hard. I, I was, like it was the letter box, super fancy VHS box set of uh, the Die Hard movies. So I've seen all of them a few times, but it's been so many years that uh, um, I've forgotten pretty much all of it, except the first one. And even that, like I remember, but I don't remember at the same time. Okay. Oh, has anyone seen Kentucky Fried Movie? I've seen Forrest Gump a bunch of times. I had it on VHS. And, you know, that was the other thing. Like, stuff I had on VHS back in the day, um, I watched a bunch. Forrest Gump was one of them. Um, but yet, who here has seen Punisher? I'm looking at you. Who's seen Kentucky Fried Movie? Okay, so Fook knows the score. You could not do that today, but oh my God, that was fucking hilarious. Probably. Like, I mean... That's the thing is like today's version of what's acceptable in society. Some people call it political correctness. I call it society changing as it does. Um, you couldn't get away with that today, but just some of those, dear God, if you could. Um, but yeah, Tank Girl. That's one I've seen about a million times. That is one of my all time favorite movies. Um, hadn't thought about it in forever until just now. Um, I've seen... I had Porky's on VHS, so I watched that a million times. Um, Revenge of the Nerds, I really like that. However, if you think about Revenge of the Nerds too hard, it goes down in flames because that is ultimately, that ends up being a movie about finding a way to commit sexual assault. It's like, I wish I wouldn't have thought of that. Which, that's a lot of 80s movies. It's just trick women into being sexually assaulted and make sure they're cool with it. And I just, yeah, like it, it didn't age well. Um, Revenge of the Nerds did not age well. 
Um, yeah, Porky's I watched a bunch of times. I no longer have the VHS collection. Um, as a as I moved on to a DVD player and out of uh, my VCR, the the tapes started falling off, and I no longer have them. There was one thing that I had that I wish I could get back because I can't find it anywhere, and it's Mortal Kombat: The Animation. And this is a 3D movie. Like, it's a... It is a 3D movie, 3D animation. And it is the worst fucking 3D you have seen in your fucking life. It is so bad that it's hilarious. Um, ah, Office Space. Love it, though. Um, S35VN, I have a feeling we'd be here for two days cutting cardboard before the edge wore out. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to wear this edge out on cardboard. We're looking at how long it takes before I got to strop this thing back, back to life. And if you guys saw the videos where I figured out how to use a diamond paste and strops, we should be getting some good results from stropping this thing. But yeah, like the S35VN I have, like they're on knives that I don't want to beat to death. Um, there is one knife I saw on Amazon, S35VN for like 35 bucks. I don't know if that's legit S35VN or just blatant false advertising, but I am so tempted to buy it and just put it through this and see, it's like S35VN, you should be able to cut for like three or four hours and it still has a good edge. Um, what brand you talking about this thing? Uh, Sativian. Um, or are you talking about what brand of S35VN? Because the, the brand on S35... Oh my god, Mad Max. I've seen that trilogy so many times because I had the box set on VHS when I was a kid and I was poor. So that's kind of all I had to pick from. That's the thing. Stuff I had on VHS when I was a kid because we didn't have money. Whatever I got on VHS, I watched a million times because I wasn't able to get new stuff constantly. Um... Shit, I'll have to look it up on Amazon. It's like some really stupid name. Hang on. Yep. Yeah, let me look this up on Amazon real quick for you. Uh, shit. Where the fuck is it? Well, let me see if it's on my wish list. Like, I, I don't know exactly what it was that I looked up to, um, to find it the first time. Okay, wish list. Ah, okay, found it. Okay. Wallopton is the name of it. This is saying S35 VN steel G10 handle with pocket clip liner lock. Uh, 3456. But yeah, maybe that makes it a little easier on you. Yeah, listen, I'm thinking about getting it and just slamming it through cardboard and seeing if it holds up. Because, I mean, that, sh like, the guys that have been here before, these live streams, I can spend up to three hours on this. And, you know, we'll check the edge every hour or so and check the edge wear. And listen, so far, I know we've done, uh, I think, 7CR, if memory serves. Um, Yeah, no, like, that is nuts. And it's like, there was a table at Blade Show, and this guy comes in, he's in a little corner by himself with a folding table, one folding table, with a white paper cloth 
the paper tablecloth from like Kroger's party supplies. And uh, there's just a stack of, there's four stacks of boxes and it's the same knife, but like one of them is like nine CR for 20 bucks. Another is like D2 or something like that. And then it went up into, oh, what was it? Like M390 or something like that for 40 bucks. And uh, like I was actually roasting that on uh, one of my Facebook groups. And they're like, yeah, no, you can actually get that for that price. You know, it just depends on how much money they spend on the, the heat treatment. Okay, hang on. Me with knives, what's going on, man? Damn it. Okay, LIPD ear TBFK. Yeah, I'm not seeing it come up on Amazon, so I'm not going to sweat it too hard. Yeah, I saw, okay, I saw one LA police gear show up, but I don't think that was the S35BM model. Let me, uh, let me go double check. I don't know. This one's not identifying what the material is on it. LA Police Gear Tactical Rescue Survival Folding Knife. Nah, that one's 8CR, so... Yeah, they... They they ain't got that on there. Yeah, I ain't spending 75 bucks. But that $35 S35, um, it's on the list. That being said, we are on the struggle bus right now, which is part of why... Thankfully, I have the backlog to chew through, but I don't have a bunch of new stuff coming in right now, and I don't have an unboxing time every three days. Yeah, so my S35VN, I've got um, the Cold Steel AD10 and the Cold Steel Frenzy. I don't think I have a, another S35VN, or I might be forgetting about it. Um, and then my S30V, I've got the Benchmade bug out CF Elite, and I got one in M390, the, the fancy bug out with the aluminum scales. Um, I'm trying to think, do I have any more S35 VM besides those? Uh, crap. I'm drawing a blank. And oh yeah, on the last stream, I know people were interested to find out what my favorite knife I ever made was. I think that might've been Maxilla asking, but I brought it down with me. All right, Fook, well, real quick, take a look at this guy. I made this guy with uh, 1095 and 15 and 20. I made a little Kiridashi out of, out of Damascus. It's actually the first Damascus build I ever made too. But yeah, folks, we're gonna we're gonna be here for a while. We're gonna be here until I get sick and tired of it. So, one of my bug outs is S30V. Um, the other bug out I have, um, it's the higher end bug out with the M390 and the aluminum scales. That one does exist. Um, that is S that is M390.
God, this thing cuts so good. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is like you don't need S35VN or S30V or M390 unless you really, really beat on your knives. Like that's the thing. I got the AD10 in case I need something that uh, can survive the kind of shit that that thing can survive. I do like the bug out quite a bit. I'm um, not gonna lie. I haven't messed with a Griptilian. I think a buddy of mine had one. Um, whatever he had, it was an assisted open bug out, which was weird to me. But the one that I wish I could replace is a, I think it was a Benchmade 9000 automatic knife. Um, I was working at a university on the Rosen Grounds crew and I was uh, running a leaf blower in one of the unmaintained areas trying to clean it out. So it had a couple of years before it needed attention again. And the knife just flew out of a wad of leaves in front of me um, and landed like right in front of my feet, basically. And the only thing wrong with it was it needed a new tip ground on it. And I took care of that as soon as I got home. And uh, I think it lasted a couple of years through extreme abuse just fine um, before the spring gave out. And the spring was probably because I didn't lubricate it or anything after getting it out of the leaves. I just rinsed it out. And it had been sitting under there for a long-ass time. Uh, yeah, Magna Cut, it's again kind of, I know I don't need it. I don't need it badly enough to spend that kind of money. You know, the bug out I bought because, one, the hype train was real, and two, like, it just looked like a very, very comfortable, easy carry and, like, a really, really good daily utility blade. Um, the AD-10, that one got me just because, you know, basically I watched, I watched an AD-10 get hammered through a brick. Very minor edge damage, you know, and that and that uh, uh, shit. The lock on it, I cannot remember what it's called for the life of me right now. Um, but that lock can take 600 pounds of force before it starts giving out. Um, you know, you can't argue with that. You know, and I've had so many knives that I've broken that folded up or snapped in weird ways that it's nice to know I got something that I can beat on the way I used to. Triad, thank you so much. Fucking Triad. But, uh, you know, I've had so many cheap knives growing up that I just, I snapped the blade on it or I snapped the lock on it or something like that. You know, it's nice to, to know I got something that I can beat on like I used to with those and it'll be fine should I ever need it. You know, if I was going out Nice. You know, if I'm if I'm going out and playing around in the woods or something like that, that's what I'm carrying with me. Um, you know, although I've learned lessons about going and playing in the woods with blades, so you know, I'm gonna be a lot more cautious. Huh. I mean, I think knife people, there's always some weird superstition with knives that everybody has. Like mine is you're not supposed to close a knife that somebody else opened. It's bad luck. Um, that one's followed me around for my entire life, pretty much. But, you know, that came from the same people that turned a single cigarette in their pack upside down, if that tells you anything. Yeah. I've got, like, Three cold steel machetes, the 8010. I got the Frenzy. I've got the Twistmaster. I've got the uh, 1911. Um, trying to remember if I picked up another cold steel. I don't think I have. But yeah, the lucky smoke. Um, yeah, like the 1911, I'm thoroughly impressed by. Oh, I've got the Cold Steel uh, Medium Luzon and the XL Luzon as well. Those are the ones I keep forgetting because I haven't played with them in forever. But yeah, the Luzon, that is one of my favorites. Yeah, the Lucky Cigarette. Now that 
people are smoking less and less and less. You don't hear about the lucky cigarette anymore. Now, did that cigarette ever help me get lucky? No, because my awkward ass ain't know how to seal the deal. But I still flipped it over. Oh, you're playing with the Sativian? Hey, Jimmy Ross, how you doing, man? Brother, my brain has got shit that fires like that, too. You're not alone. You know, it's just, it's not a memory you want to associate with that. Um, oh, that is weird. Yeah, I don't have any problems with the uh, the edge coming in contact with the backspace around mine. But again, they haven't been used a whole lot. Like, I've carried the XL Luz on quite a bit because I can jam it in the waistband and carry it very comfortably. But, you know, at work, all I'm doing is cutting the pallet off of plastics and occasionally cutting up a cardboard display so I can get it into the baler. That's kind of it. Um, this one came sharp as hell. Like I can agree to that, but for me, the ergos suck and all three opening mechanisms on it just plain suck. Like I love the way this blade looks and I love the blade itself, but I don't like anything else about it. That's why we're beating it up here. I will say this is one of the nicest slicers we've had so far on a live stream. Um, get, no, like my finger gets smashed so hard in that thing and I hate it so much. And the front flipper is nearly impossible to use. Um, the, uh, the thumb hole is nearly impossible to use. It sucks. Um, I don't know if cold steel's quality has dropped. I haven't had a lot of stuff from the before time. So y'all are going to know more than I do. And when I sharpen, I have got the, uh, work sharp precision adjust. Um, so I've got that over there if I need it. Uh, I think it's a precision adjust, uh, the mid range one that's got all the, uh, the stuff with it. Um, and then if I'm on a cheap knife, then I've got the work sharp, uh, kin onion belt or kin onion, uh, belt grinder. So I can, uh, I can slack belt sharpen on that to incredibly sharp. And then I've got, now I've got three strops with, uh, five different uh, compounds spread out between them. So I can get things ridiculously sharp. Like it's not the best edge on the planet, but it is more than sharp enough for anything I need. It'll shave, it'll zap through paper, all that. Yeah, I think all of mine, well, take that back. The machetes, I've got the Bowie machete, the Copus machete, and the Cavalry Saber machete. I got those, I'm assuming, before it was a uh, before cold steel was sold um but the ad10 was bought probably about two years ago the uh the luzon was purchased in the last year here the frenzy was purchased in the last year here too Yeah, so the Frenzy, the Luzons, and the AD-10. The AD-10 I might have gotten in 21. I'm not sure. I think it might have been. No. No, that was like in the last two years. But. Yeah, so I've got one of two things on my hands. Either knives that were made before it was sold off and just going through backstock. Or I've got knives that were made after, so I really don't know.
But like the cold steels I have, I don't have fit and finish issues with them. I'll say that. Like No, if, if I got fit and finish problems, I'm going to whine about them. Just like I'm whining about the ergos on this, which it's already starting a hot spot on my hand, a pretty good one. Although we are getting them back to the point. Well, that's the thing. This is on factory edge. This is on factory edge. Um, the, the, so this buck knife that I have here, this 110 is from 1980 to 1981 in that window. And, uh, I sharpened this up on the, uh, the work, the work sharp, uh, belt grinder on the slack belt part. And it came up stupid sharp. Um, that being said, it took about two hours before it finally needed to be stropped. And that's kind of what we're pushing towards. Uh, 3CR took three hours of cuts before it needed to be stropped. Um, the Walmart Ozark Trail Axis Lock Knife, this took about an hour before it needed to strop. Um, the other knives have been averaging two to three hours. Um, so I'm kind of expecting this to probably not really need to be stropped until I'm just sick and tired of cutting cardboard up. Oh, I do want an Espada XL for no other reason than to have an Espada XL. However, right now the uh, Cold Steel Frenzy is what I'd like to get. Even though that's only an A an Aus 10 blade, um, I still want it. I'm guessing a slab of S35 EM like that would probably run that up to about 300 bucks as well. But at, at Aus 10, I don't really see like the $250 price tag being justified entirely. Okay. Oh, things are popping when I stretch. We got some copy paper. Let's see how the edge is doing. Definitely not quite as sharp as it was now. So we've got the edge broken in a little bit. But... It's still sharp, it's just we got that initial uh, breakdown of the edge, and it's probably going to stay like this for either the rest of the night or at least the next two hours. It's got to be at least two hours. Um, because we've had 3CR take three hours of this and be just fine. Yeah, I've attempted enough cuts. Back to the slaying. Um, yeah, the, uh, Cold Steel Twistmaster that I have, uh, that belonged to my uncle before he passed away. some of these cuts never saw red dawn adjacent to topic uh, Commando, Arnold Schwarzenegger, is the reason that I started trying out throwing circular saw blades for uh, instead of Ninja Stars, which 
the blades that I had actually worked pretty good, not gonna lie. But you're talking about some old ones before they started uh, brazing uh, tungsten carbide teeth on them or whatever the hell they use now. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff I need to see. Like, I didn't see Rambo until four or five years ago. And that was only because we were at Goodwill and they had the, uh... oh, wow. Um, but Rambo, they had the box set at Goodwill for like six bucks. It's like, I'd be an idiot not to buy it. I'm really borking some of these cuts. And right now we're going in on cardboard from work and the cardboard at work is much more hardcore than Amazon boxes much more hardcore. Uh, if you like the 80s action movies and stuff like that, you really should see Rambo all the way through, but, you know, that's kind of like saying you have to see any other movie all the way through. Let's see what the dice says. We don't do anything with it, but Roll to seven. Not sure what that means. We always roll the dice at least once a night. Huh. So I'm going to guess there's some military service involved there, which me being what I am, I am not familiar with. I never did military service. But that is a long, fucked up story. My uncle was in the army and got out of the army, and I think it was like 87 or 88. He was uh, stationed in Germany. And so he was there, Cold War, Berlin Wall, the works. And he didn't talk about the partying they did that much, although he, what he did mention, oh dear God, he has seen some wild shit there. Um, but one of my favorite stories from him because he was, I believe he was in the uh, the engineering corps and uh, so they were doing a training exercise and some special forces guys were uh, using the engineering guys as their target and uh, so they were supposed to just attempt to evade and eventually get caught and my uncle's like nah fuck that we're doing what I want instead he the the story goes he went to the German version of Home Depot, whatever that was, and got a bunch of those uh, motion-activated lights that you put around the outside of your house. And he replaced the bulbs with copy cans that were uh, filled with paintballs and a small explosive charge, just like a wad of gunpowder. And uh, hung those up in the trees as they were moving away from the, uh, the guys that were tracking them. And he basically wiped their entire crew out with those things. Which seems a little far-fetched, but he had a plaque from the guys in his unit when he retired that uh, they had all designated him Rambo. And uh, like he had the, the paperwork to back it up. And unfortunately, um, nobody knows where that plaque is. Oh, Korean DMZ. Woo! Buddy, oh, I know enough to know enough that that had to be fucking wild. That 
I mean, that was the thing. Like, my uncle was the guy I wanted to be when I grew up um, for most of my life. So, like, when I was a kid, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to join the military. And uh, the short version of a dark story is somebody in my house discovered that military-style PT doesn't leave bruises. And CPS quit showing up. So, yeah, there's a reason that I knew I wouldn't survive boot camp. Like, as long as I never do military-style PT in my life again. Um, yeah. Uh, nothing good ever comes from invading Poland. I mean, come on. I think we should all agree people need to quit trying to invade Poland. That being said, I'm genuinely worried about what happens if Russia decides to try to invade Poland. Which, last I remember, there was some talk about that, and everyone's like, God no, God no, God no, we don't want that war. We don't we don't want World War III to pop off on that. Shaving with a blowtorch sounds like some shit that I would have done back in the day. But that was back when I was doing stuff just to be doing stuff all the time. Like, if, if the weirder it was, the better. It did not gain me any social standing, but it kept me quite entertained. Yeah. This cardboard is significantly tougher to cut than it feels like it should be. I'm going to get an old Amazon box out just to see what the difference is. Because this stuff, oh, farther back into the blade, it's starting to wedge really hard. Now, I don't think my great-grandmother had this in mind when she gave me this little bench when I was a kid. being said, I have had my head entirely engulfed in flames once that I remember. It wasn't fun. Good thing I was wearing a hat, so I got to keep the hair on my head. This stuff doesn't like cutting that good either. Don't tell me we're going to find out Sativian had a crap heat treatment. Oh, I don't know if you guys uh, are familiar with uh, Randy's WSG, but company called Jin sent him a, a knife kit. I think they said it was a D2 blade, and you, you build the kit yourself, and it's got all the bits and pieces in it, which uh, you know, if, if you've taken a uh, if you've taken a basic pocket knife apart and put it back together, it doesn't feel like you've accomplished a whole lot. Um, I know he sent them the link for my channel. Hopefully at some point they uh, reach out to me. I'd love to get one of those kits, put it together, and then run it through Cardboard Slayer. That seems like that could be a good time. Like it's only a $30 kit, but I really don't have $30 bucks right now. Yeesh, chat went dead.
I've heard the name Roxon, but I don't think I've ever actually seen one. I'll tell you though, um, I really want a Boker advent calendar, but for some reason they're like, hey, we're only going to make three this year. They're going to sell out. Um, okay, that sounds vaguely familiar. But yeah, they're like, we're going to make three of them this year. They're going to sell out instantly. So uh, you're not getting one because fuck you. That's why. Oh, cool. You know, Cutlery Lover did have the uh, Boker Advent Calendar. That's where I saw it. And, of course, by the time his video popped up, they were sold out. Um, yeah, no, that's what I was saying. Like, you know, and, and I know I'm not quite up to speed with the conversation because there's like a 20 to 30 second delay between when I speak and when it shows up on your screen. But yeah, like the video popped up and I went and looked for them and they were sold out. Like, you sons of bitches. You're telling me y'all couldn't make enough kits for everybody. Really. Like, there should be enough demand for that for you to make enough for, you know, everyone to get one. Should be. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's weird because it... It's just, it's a little weird to me. Like, there's enough demand for those advent calendars. It was, it was, it seems like it would make sense to actually, you know, mass manufacture them. It's like, I know, I know a lot of people that, you know, it's like, he's a knife guy. I'm not sure what to get him. Oh, this is perfect right here. And like, I'm surprised. I'm not paying 5k for a knife either. Like even if I win the lottery, unless that knife is somehow capable of changing my entire damn life, no. If I've got a really really close friend that can make a $5,000 knife and I want to support them, then I'll buy one, but yeah, no. But like you'd think somebody else that makes knives too would have went, hey, these advent calendars are selling, like, ridiculously. Maybe we should make them, too. Maybe that's just not for everyone. That's a really big, uh, yeah, 5k would get me a lot, um, a lot of my wish list, but that 5k, I'd almost rather spend it on something else like, you know, in-home entertainment or, you know, upgrading a car or something I'm actually going to use all the time. It's like, you know, if you're doing what I'm doing right now and I'm not that deep into it, still, I have like, at some point. I am going, oh yeah, that, that would be why the price tag is there, which is very cool. Don't get me wrong, but still, that's too much for a single knife. But, like, I'm not even that that far into it. You know, the channel has got, like, 840 subscribers. Um, that's not a big channel. It doesn't really justify, you know, massive expenditures yet. But I still have probably the better part of, like, 150 knives floating around now. 
Um, at some point, I'm going to round up all the knives that I can find and do like a state of the collection thing. And it's going to be a long video of me just kind of going through every single knife that I can find. And just here's what I got. Here's what I've done with it. All that. How much I like it. And uh, that should be whew, should be a big video. Honey, I'm about to upload a two hour long video. Get out the good Wi-Fi. At, like one of the things with me is like I'm not the most social person on the planet so like unless I know you and we're trading in person I just I don't go for it you know it's like guys will offer to send me stuff to try out on the channel and to test and it's like brother I am not going to be reliable about sending you your shit back um oh yeah secondary market is stupid so, you know, guys will offer to send me stuff. It's like, dude, I promise you I'm not going to be reliable about sending your shit back because I can barely manage my life as it is. You know, that that actually stopped me from doing the 500, the 500 subscriber giveaway was I didn't want to be responsible for actually getting it into the post office or getting it to UPS. And the thing is, there's a UPS store right next to my store. Like, I work next door to a UPS uh, store, and I still know I'm not going to be reliable about getting shit into the into ups to, to have it sent yeah that's kind of that's one of the things i'm worried about with midgard's messer when i finally have the money to buy one of the knives i want from there it's going to be secondary market only and then it'll be you know a thousand percent markup basically oh you want a finris yeah that'll be two grand buddy Oh yeah, bro! It took me two fucking years to get my dessert warrior at a MSRP. Um, someone in a Facebook knife group posted theirs, and I jumped on it, and I managed to catch them while they were still in stock. Now, what no one told me was the following year they were going to release a fucking million of everything, and they weren't they weren't going to go out of stock. But you know, the the first uh, two years I tried, or the first two drops that I tried to get in on. They sold out like in 20 minutes and uh, it just, it was painfully disappointing. And now that they've released so many variants of it, they're like Fortnite skins now. And it's like, well, the allure is gone. I know everybody else is buying them, but it's like, eh, like, I, I did want the Wiener Warrior. I'm not going to lie. That thing was goofy enough to get my attention, but you know, that, that was money that I couldn't afford to spend. Yeah. The, the hot dog one, I I want that one, um, but, you know, at the time, it's like, I'm not going to carry it. I'm not going to beat on it. I'm not doing a hardcore review on it, so, you know, it doesn't justify its own cost. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, like... They sold out in no time. Like, I think the, the the last run that I missed the drop on, they had them for about an hour, and they were gone. Like, I went in, and I saw it, and I messaged the wife. I'm like, hey, are we cool with spinning this? And it took her, like, an hour to get back to me, and when I came back, they were gone. All right, Swave, have a good one, man. There's a reasonable chance that you run into copyright issues with a uh, Fox Media, which is now run by Disney. And I have heard Disney is incredibly litigious. Not Nintendo level litigious, but still very litigious. Like, God, I love me some Nintendo stuff. Yeah, there might be. Like, I love me some Nintendo stuff. Don't get me wrong, you know, I actually like the Wii U a lot, but if you even go into, like, there was a, what was it, a, a game development engine or something like that called Dream that became accessible to, um, it became accessible to the masses and it was easy to use, so someone 
did a, a remake of Mario 64, I think it was, in Dream. And uh, it was kind of like an HD remake. And he showed a video of it. Like, he wasn't even making it to sell or to distribute. It was for his own use. And he still got fucking sued by Nintendo. Or at least he got cease and desist. Like, Nintendo has single-handedly killed um, emulation for the most part. Because, oh no, he's emulating games that we don't make or support anymore. Like, they went after one emulation group because they had old ROMs on there. And they shut them down. Dude owed like a million dollars or some shit like that. And he was supposed to pay like 50 bucks a month. And he's like, yeah, no, I'm not paying that. So they went into some real bullshit. Um, this last one, the, they were selling uh, an emulator that could be used to run Switch games if you went through the right steps. And the steps weren't that hard to find. So they got sued. And the thing is, after that first emulation site got taken down, um, you couldn't find safe ROMs. Even if they weren't Nintendo, you could not find safe ROMs anymore. You were going to give your computer super aids if you downloaded anything. Like, there was nowhere to turn. And I think those have kind of come back now, and they're going to get shut down again. God bless Nintendo, but fuck Nintendo. You know... If you're going to sue people over ROMs, then support game conservation on your own shit. People will pay money. There is proof. People will pay money to be able to get, like, a collection of old Nintendo games that they want um, off of your store. And there's a lot of games people are asking for to buy them on their devices, to buy them on the Switch, buy them on the DS. And they won't fucking support them, but they will sue your ass if you try to support it for them. Although, if you're in the legal field, I can't imagine anything better than being Nintendo's lawyers. That is hitting the fucking gold mine. That's like being one of Disney's lawyers. Like, you probably won't take long to have never work again money. That cut was a little rough. Uh oh. That's more like it. I feel like it's starting to struggle with the cut a little bit. Well, I, I don't hate Disney so much. They've done a lot of cool shit, but I also know in the back of my head, like, there's a lot of not good history there. I know Walt Disney admired a German dictator or two in his day. Alright, brother, enjoy dinner. Um, I need to quit thinking about dinner. I haven't eaten anything today because I usually don't eat before I go to work. Because that takes time or costs money. And that wound up being like a 10-hour day. And a very physically demanding 10-hour day. So what else seems interesting? Uh, how about a car that you regret no longer having? I got two of those.
And one of them that ain't gonna make a lot of sense is the Ford Aerostar minivan. That thing was so fucking good. Uh, if you want it to count, yes. However, I do not have a wife that I regret no longer having. Um, my divorce was a hundred percent my decision. I want it out. Oh, no, dude, like, I know people have been left and didn't want to be left and all that stuff. That just wasn't me. Like, if I tap out and I want to leave a situation, that means I am done. Like, I've been pushed. Uh, the next deal for testing, I don't know yet. Um, I'm not sure what all I have that we haven't gotten into. Because, like, we're doing this with knives I don't care about that much. Um, or at least that's what I've decided. We're going to start doing this with knives that I don't care about a whole lot. Um, or that I don't care for. Like, I brought down the uh, SOG uh, Terminus XR, which, this is a huge disappointment for me. Like, massive. And 90% of it's this garbage-ass pocket clip, and I'm not going through what it takes to get the right pocket clip, because SOG's customer service royally let me down on that. Um, in March of last year, I called and asked for a Terminus XR LTE pocket clip. I paid them for the shipping on Terminus XR LTE pocket clip. And uh, in September, I called them back to ask what was happening. September. And then they're like, oh, um, we like they never sent me an order number or anything so they're like well what's your order number i don't have it they never gave me one so they go and they look and they're like oh yeah you did order pocket clips so i was like yeah i need the terminus xr lte pocket clips and they sent me the same garbage ass pocket clips that i had in a different color it's like this isn't what i asked for and it took me like seven months to get these april may june july august september like six months um cryo d2 um yeah cryo d2 um and the thing that sucks is i like everything about this knife but this pocket clip makes it impossible to carry so yeah we may be doing cryo d2 next Yeah, you know, I, I got enough knives that I'm disappointed by and don't like that much that, you know, we can do this for a little while. Um, I know we did that uh, 1980 uh, Buck 110. We did the uh, Walmart Axis Lock. We did a, a 3CR 13 knife from the first season of the Super Budget Showdown. Um, we did one of the knives from Timu. Um, we did do that one. That one claims to be D2, but it's Timu, so I don't know whether it actually is. The Timu knife did a little bit better than expected. Um, which I'm going to tell you right now, spending 10 weeks EDCing Timu knives fucking sucks. Maxella, what's up, buddy? Yeah, at some point we got started on movies that we've seen a whole bunch of times and of course drifted off into um, knife stuff and life happening stuff. I know we arrived at cars that you regret no longer having and then that went nowhere. Um, we're cutting cardboard, but we got 14C28N on the Sativian that I'm not a big fan of, so we're wearing this edge out. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Ergos on this ain't great. It's hot spotting 
It's not the worst hot spotting, but it's enough to be uncomfortable. And Sativian makes some pretty good stuff, but this is a big swing and a miss. Um, that's probably it. Now, that being said, it took a fair amount of cardboard to dull it out. Um, the factory edge on it absolutely sucked. Um, it sucked. But I took it and sharpened it myself to the point where it was shaving very easily and doing that slice on paper like I was cutting through water, basically. Um, so I took it up to a really good edge. And at that point, I think it was like two hours before I had to strop it back up. Um, uh, I've, I've done enough live streams now that I've kind of forgotten what happened to the older ones. Um, but at some point, and if you guys are new here or you haven't been around long, I've got a series that I call the Super Budget Showdown. And... Uh, it's all knives that cost 15 bucks or less, and uh, they all get stacked up in a head-to-head, -head, you know, first through 10th place. And uh, one of the things I've started doing is Cardboard Slayer, but I've been sitting here by myself trying to keep myself occupied with YouTube while I do it. And, uh, you know, you put, you put a knife through like 250 feet of cardboard, and then, uh, you know, you see how well it holds its edge up. And I thought, you know... Putting a knife, especially a Timu knife, through that many feet of cardboard would com completely wreck the edge, but no. Like, it got to where it wasn't cutting, you know, push-cutting paper that well, but it still had an edge on it. Um, so, on the next Super Budget Showdown series, we're going to do live streams while I do Cardboard Slayer. Um, just to see how that goes. Like, I've... I've got the I've got the unifying theme picked out. I got everything picked out on that, but I wouldn't mind the channel being a little bigger before I do the next one because, like, I put ten weeks of work into a video series. Be for Baron. So you know, you put like ten weeks of work into a video series, and each video gets like seventy nine, one hundred and three, sixty five views. It's like, oh, pizza. Oh, uh, I. I damn near stopped and got some on the way home from work today, but I was so tired and beat down from work that I forgot that I was going to do it. And now they got me closing again for a while, so by the time I leave work, everything is closed. Because we're getting out of work at like 11.30 midnight. Which, I don't got to be at work until 4 p.m. tomorrow, so uh, I... Uh, I got to stay awake until about two in the morning before I can load up on medication to knock myself out for the rest of the night. And actually, I should probably stay up later, but um, by the time you start hitting midnight, 1 a.m. after you woke up at 2 a.m., um, it starts to suck. And that's the thing. I got up at 2 a.m. today to go in and open. And... Uh, You know, I got to go to sleep around, or I got to load up on medication around 2 a.m. so that by 3.30 or 4 o'clock, I'm out cold and medicated within an inch of my life. So it's going to be a long evening, which is part of why we're here until I get sick and tired of cutting. And the much better half is bringing food home from her job, which is the same place I work, but a different location. So there will be food eventually. But the question is, do you guys think I should sit here and eat while I'm on the live stream and then go back to cutting? Uh, 
Uh, this thing ain't cutting as good as it was. Um, let's clean the adhesive off and see how it's cutting paper because that is mildly alarming. Of course, we got the trusty sprayway glass cleaner. Comanche Bigfoot. I'd like to see what that is. I'm not going to lie. So it's still cutting paper okay. Um, it's about the same as it was. It's kind of hard to tell. When you got the uh, adhesive stuck to the blade, it starts hanging up in the paper pretty bad. I think one of the cool things with old cheap knives is just they weren't built to last. So when you find them and they're old, it's kind of neat. Um, hang on. I got to look this up. Oh my God. This 100% looks like, oh yeah, frost cutlery. Um, I was fixing to say it, frost cutlery. Yeah, I loved this stuff when I was a kid because I'm always like, look at that cool handle on it and everything else. But yeah, like it, I knew frost cutlery was going to be cheap and kind of mall ninja um, when I first saw it, but I was still like, I have to have it anyways. Boy, thank you, sir. I am pushing 170 watts right now. Jesus Christ, this thing is not happy with cutting this stuff. Yeah, because I remember the cheap knives used to be uh, stainless Pakistan and surgical stainless. <laughs> Which, uh... I went looking on eBay to see if I could find a vintage stainless Pakistan knife. Uh, shit. But I, I am looking at a stainless Pakistan knife to see how that edge holds up. Um, I started vaping in, I think, 2016. Um, at that point, I was smoking, like, a pack of Camel Wides and a pack of Marlboro Reds every day, and I was sick and tired of it. But I couldn't quit cold turkey, so I finally quit making fun of it and tried it. And now I'm in too far to back out. Um, what the hell is up with this cardboard, for fuck's sake? I don't like this stuff. What the hell? Okay, we're not doing that anymore. Let's change cardboard out and see if that does any better. Uh... Knock off! What's up, brother? Josh, 
Josh, what's up, man? Twelve C twenty seven. I I don't know what any of those things are. Yeah, it's cutting. I don't know why I hated that last piece of cardboard so much. And that's the thing. If I if I can wear the adhesive off of this thing. probably get a much better cut on the paper uh, and that's one thing i've learned when you got adhesive stuck to the blade from tape it don't do the paper cut that smooth but let's see we're not even at the two hour mark yet and uh we've had Again, 440C from the 80s um, take longer than this. I think that took two hours to need its drop. Um, 3CR13, three and a half hours before I really needed to drop it up. Punisher, what's up? Okay. What the hell was I fixing to say? Oh yeah. I need to find another painted knife and go in on that. Like just wear the paint off while we're doing this. Um, crap, like I said, um, I remember some of how long they cut, um, I said the 440C or whatever, the, the buck 110 and 440, um, that one took uh, about two hours before it needed to drop, whatever the hell the steel is in that Ozark trail knife took about an hour. Um, 3CR13 took three and a half hours before the edge was really, really worn out. Um, I don't remember what else we've done now. I'll be honest. I said, like, we're a good few live streams in, and so much has happened in between live streams just with life that my already shaky memory is, uh, thoroughly shook. Um, oh, oh. So we did uh, what I think is 440 or 420 steel. I don't know. But this is a Winchester knife from a Walmart gift set from 2007. Um, it's so cheap that the scales were held on with uh, double-sided tape. Um, and this thing took, I think, around two and a half hours, maybe somewhere around there. Um, if I remember right, we did a... Uh, I don't remember. I think we might have done the open L or we were planning on it and never got around to it. I think we never got around to it. Um, someone will have to remind me. Like I said, I've completely forgotten. Um, I think we did the open L number eight. I'm 99% sure. Um, what the hell else have we done? There's there's a couple others that I, I just can't remember. I can't remember. I'm trying so hard. Now, I will say those live streams are up, but they run two to three and a half hours. So you don't want to sit through the whole thing, but maybe fast forward to the end. Uh, the last 10 minutes or so um, should be a recap. I have also done follow-up videos after the fact to share what happened with the, uh, the blade steels. So there are videos post live stream that do explain what happened and how long the blades lasted. That's just like tomorrow or the day after I'll get around to doing the follow-up video on this, letting everyone know how the uh, 
um, how the steel held up. Yeah, no, the the win those Winchester knives are garbage. Like gun companies sell the worst knives. I know everyone likes to say they make the worst knives. They do not make knives and they do not sell knives. Um, they sell branded merchandise that happens to be knife shaped. And I will die on that hill. Um, and I mean, that's the thing that gets me is like Harbor Freight with the Icon knife. Granted, that Icon knife is 100% a clone, 100% a total ripoff. But if, uh, say, uh, Smith & Wesson or uh, what's the other one? You got Smith & Wesson. Um, Jesus Christ. There's another gun company that is notorious for gas station grade knives, and I can't remember who it is right now. But if one of those guys released a knife with the kind of quality that came from that Harbor Freight Icon knife, I think they would completely turn that game around and probably turn that into a profitable Um, but you know that that could turn out to be a thing is the hype train on that would be massive it would be absolutely massive you know and yeah like they put their name on you know gas station grade shit and uh you know people buy them because of the name and because of some brand loyalty Ariel rifleman how's it going but you know and the icon knife it is well made it functions beautifully. It is comfortable to carry. Like everything about it is right, but part of that is also it's a clone of a bag knives mini glimpse. Um, you know, if you're interested in buying one, by all means have at it. I am certainly not going to try to talk you out of it. It's a good knife. It's just, you know, given that I'm trying to do a channel and you know, I'm, I'm trying to preserve some degree of integrity, like I don't support clones. And uh, I don't want to buy them, and I certainly don't want to, you know, give them uh, airtime on YouTube. Um, you know, that I just, I don't want to, I don't want to do that for them. So, you know, I'm not for clones, you know. I bought the Icon knife thinking maybe, uh, maybe it was a rebranded bag knife, you know, like they had, they got the licensing from Beg and the go ahead, especially with the way they advertised it. Um, yeah, I, I've actually got an M Tech that I've got saved on a uh, Amazon so that we can do a cardboard slayer on an M Tech and see how that goes. But you know, I, I thought maybe because you know they're they're advertising they got an American designer all this stuff. Um, and so I figured, yeah, they, they went through Beg and got you know. Uh, basically a modified version of the mini glimpse that they could sell branded as icon um, with an NDA attached to it. Um, it is currently 6.30 p.m. here um, or 18.30. I am in the eastern continental United States, not too far away from Atlanta. Do I have a Razer VX? Um, since I don't know what that is, no, I don't. Oh, um, so have you guys seen where at some point Xbox's games? I don't know. I don't spend any time in Atlanta. Fuck that place. Um, I don't want to drive there. I don't want to drive in there. Like, no. Um, the only reason I've driven into the outskirts of Atlanta recently was to go to Blade Show last year. So I don't know nothing about what's going on in Atlanta. Like, I am near Atlanta, but not that near. But... Um, have you guys seen where Xbox is taking the exclusivity off their games so that they can be released on multiple platforms? It's like, I am 100% a PlayStation guy through and through. 
And that is largely because the first PlayStation was modeled after the Super Nintendo. Um, oh, no, you're good. Like, there's no problem asking. I just don't know. Um, I know there are parts of Atlanta you don't go to. But, you know, like, you know, I grew up on Nintendo and Super Nintendo, and the Super Nintendo was one of the best consoles in history, period. Um, so, like, a lot of my time was on the Super Nintendo, and then the PlayStation 1 came out, and it was basically a beefed-up Super Nintendo controller, so it was a pretty seamless transition, and that got me locked into the PlayStation ecosystem from then on. Um... I need to get an old PS1 that makes the startup sound because that is one of the most satisfying sounds on the planet. Um, I can still play all my PS1s on my PS2 if I want. Um, I just, I need that noise. I wish to God the PS5 would let you set the startup noise to that. Just let me set my PS5 startup noise to the startup noise from the original PS1. Um, I swear to God. I would shit your pants. Yeah, I've I haven't I know Hell Divers 2 exists, but I haven't even seen any gameplay footage. Like I've been so out of that. But no, like the one thing that I want on PlayStation is a uh, Forza. Um like, I was a huge, huge Gran Turismo fan for years. And uh, occasionally I will still fire up the older ones. Um, but, you know, like, they massacred my boy on that last one. Uh, you know, when they turned it into, you have to pay microtransactions to use the game, basically. Um, no thank you. Okay, Starship Troops, we got you. Um, I may end up taking a look into that when I hit that point where I need to be video gaming again. Um, or I may try to find a more relaxed group for, uh, Fortnite. Here we are. Hey, beautiful. Like my, my kids got me back into playing Fortnite a little bit, but like I don't have a regular crew that I can run with. It's uh um you know a lot more relaxed. Like the guys I was running with that burned me out on it, Jesus Christ, they were difficult to run with and they made every game just a giant headache. And the skill gap was wide enough with the MMR that I was in lobbies I had no business being in with these guys being aggressive and being um difficult to work with so they they burned me right out on it i just kind of gave up after a while um and i understand the beat down on your wallet from fortnite um i think the last thing i bought was one of the teenage mutant ninja turtle skin just because i needed leonardo um, and the last thing before that was the Futurama skins, because I had to have the Futurama skins. I needed Philip J. Fry, and I needed Bender. And I haven't done it in a long time, but I need to marathon Futurama again. And I don't think I have the streaming service that the new episodes are on right now. Not until our finances get a little better. What, those are on Hulu, right? Oh, no, you're absolutely right. Like, it took me a long time to adapt to online multiplayer, and that was honestly doing PvP on Destiny 1. That really got me comfortable with it. And even then, hot mic is not turned on. I only hear the mic from my teammates, or if I'm going by myself, there's no mic.
This looks like the same cardboard that wouldn't cut earlier. Yeah, this cardboard hates being cut. The last Call of Duty I played was Call of Duty World War II on the PS4. Um, I actually like that one a lot. It's just, uh, if you're going into PvP, it turns out the worse your internet connection is, the better you are. Uh, my internet connection was too fast. So uh, you go in there on hardcore where, you know, one shot kill, basically. I could mag dump somebody at point blank range and the, it would finally register the hit about halfway through the mag. And, uh, of course, everybody else's uh, latency is all fucked up, so they're getting me on the first shot, and it made it absolute hell. And the spawn camping also ruined the game for me. Like, it hit a point where you couldn't make it five feet off the spawn point without getting smoked. Okay, so we're at about the same point cutting that we were an hour ago. That, uh, that edge getting broken in and getting that uh, super fine apex out of the way. Um, we're hanging tight. All right. Don't be bullshit, cardboard. This cardboard hates being cut. And this big old slab of steel on this blade is noisier than I would have expected. I did try Call of Duty Cold War um, during the beta. And that was just a few maps of PvP on there. And that actually felt really good. But uh, my buddy that was super into it, he didn't get it. And uh, he loves him some Call of Duty, but he is also, you know, now married and has a kid and everything else. So, you know, he's got priorities. Yeah, this particular kind of cardboard does not like being cut. Um, I think you got to have borderline perfect edge alignment to get a clean cut on it. And again, maybe you got to cut against the grain. I don't know. We're just going to avoid clogging this blade up with an adhesive on this. Kenneth Williams, how you doing, man? I thought cutting against the grain would go a little smoother, but that ain't it either. That is not the secret. So I, I like this thing so much, even though they fucked up so many things in the design. Yeah, it, it does cut worse against the grain, but I had that one cut go super smooth, so I was like, maybe that'll do better than this has been doing, but no. Like, 
like most of the knives we tested have had, have had a hard time against the grain on any cardboard, but I was hoping maybe with this that it'd smooth it out a little bit. It likes it being held like this with the tip pointing down. I'm trying to think of something interesting to throw out there, and I'm drawing a total blank right now. Like, on my opening at work schedule, I'm normally asleep by now, and I've been swinging back and forth between closing, opening, closing, opening, and uh, it's got me kind of messed up. Oh. Liquids. I opened this morning, so I was up at 2 a.m., and I closed tomorrow, so I don't go into work until 4 p.m. And now I have to stay up until past midnight. Yeah, I know, like, we get people watching. I don't know if they're, like, just kind of listening as they drive or something else and, uh, you know, enjoying listening. That's the thing. Like, I'd, I'd like the comments to pop off again. That's half the fun here is the comments. It's just I'm not sure what to add. Like I said, I, I threw my one good idea out there. Threw my one good idea out there is movies that we've watched a bunch of times. And I cannot think of another interesting topic at the moment. Because we're already talking about knives. Like, that's... I know that's why most of us are here. Like, I wonder... I wonder if I just went live and didn't talk and turned this into an ASMR thing, how many people would just like hearing that over and over again until they fell asleep. You know, get get the long uh, the long fake fingernails and tap on the mic a little bit. I have neither seen nor heard of that movie, sir. My brain is starting so hard. I am so tired right now, guys. Okay. I haven't seen a ton of Clint Eastwood movies, like kind of old westerns. At the time I would have been interested in them was, again, I only had the VHSs that I happened to encounter. None of them were old Clint Eastwood, so uh, I missed out on a lot of that. I had a friend that would watch old westerns on whatever the hell channel it was. Um, he had cable, and I didn't. And, like, it, it really, like, they always moved so, the movies, the pacing was so slow that uh, 
you know, I never, it never quite clicked with me. And then one day he gives me a, a bottle of Doc Brown's Black Velvet, um, some kind of liquor. I forget what variety, but it was a brown liquor. And because I didn't understand how liquor worked, you drink a little and wait a while, and then stuff happens. Um, this would have been back in like 1999, sir. I don't think it was that. But uh, so I didn't understand how liquor works. So I chugged a little bit. Nothing happened. I chugged a bit more. Nothing happened. And I think I went through half of that thing. And uh, then it all started kicking in. And I'm like sitting there watching. I was like, all of a sudden, the pace made perfect sense. And everything looked like it was flowing right. And I was enjoying the movie. And then uh, I figured, I'm good. So I pounded the rest of it. And uh, that was, I forget what the unit of measurement is. But the bottle was like maybe yay big, something like that. And about yay thick. Uh, I think it might be a fifth. I don't know. Um, but then I had to walk home, and that was like an hour, an hour long walk, basically. Wow, that shit was fully, fully kicking in. I don't remember that walk home. I really don't. You know what? It was probably one of the Turner Broadcasting channels like TBN or something like that back then. Now that I think about it. I've, I've done that a couple times because, like, I would forget how liquor worked because it was always beer or chuckle brush. And uh, every time I'd, like, make a complete ass out of myself without fail. Me and Hard Spirits never got along. I take that back. There were a couple of times we got along great. Um, one of those... Uh, a buddy of mine recommended a Gatorade with vodka in it. So we wouldn't dump a ton of vodka in the bottle, but we would dump enough to be, a, you know, a significant effect. Pound a bottle of Gatorade with vodka in it. Pound another bottle of Gatorade. Like, we went through a ton of that shit that night. And uh, I was supposed to... Uh, I was supposed to go down to the basement and... Uh, clean up the basement, box a ton of shit up, mark the boxes, all that. And, uh, you know, I don't remember that night. Uh, my buddy Steve did, apparently. As I woke up the next morning, I'm like, ah, fuck, dude, let's go clean up the basement and get the stuff in boxes. He's like, you already did. I'm like, what? But yeah, you, you, already, you already did that. And I go downstairs in the basement and look, and these boxes are all stacked perfectly. They're organized and, like, it's my handwriting on the boxes, but it's like the cleanest handwriting of the last 20 years of my life on those boxes. Oh, wow. Yeah, that'll do it. I actually had one of those nights. Um, a buddy of mine was uh, mixing drinks. And uh, he poured me a screwdriver that... Uh, he made with mostly vodka and a little bit of orange juice. Uh, given how my night went after that, I think he also slipped some drugs in there, and I don't think that he thought I was going to drink the one that had the drugs in it. I'm not really friends with that guy anymore, but it took me years to figure out that's probably what happened. He might have been trying to rupee someone else. Yeah, ginger ale is gross anyways. I said what I said.
But quite possibly, like, I fell out. I could still hear everything going on, but I couldn't wake up or move um, or do anything except lay there. And it's like, I didn't feel getting kicked in the groin. I didn't feel getting dragged up a flight of stairs. I didn't feel anything. And apparently everybody at the party thought that was amazing. Um, yeah, no, the weekend is going, dude. Um, I had to get up and go to work this morning. I have to go to work tomorrow. Like, I don't experience weekends the way everyone else does. The way everyone else does. Yeah. And listen, the, the guy was a known asshole, but I didn't have a lot of friends. And we went way back. So it didn't occur to me that he would do something like that. But, you know, I also didn't know a lot of the people around me that well because I wasn't the guy they partied with. I was the guy they hung out and did nothing with in the house all day. Or I was the guy that would go in the backyard and light shit on fire, not the guy that, you know, they did their, their drugs with. But, yeah, man, I mean, aside from work, weekend's going good. You know, it's just another weekend for me. You know, looking forward to my next day off somewhere towards the end of the week. Yeah, so I don't know if I say somebody's ass getting roofied myself or anything like that, but if I did, thank God for small favors. Now, that being said, if someone gets roofied and assaulted, I can't imagine how bad that experience has to be if, like, they remember the kind of things I remembered. Dear God. very selective about who I'm social with. Like, there are people I will be very social with. I am fucking delighted to see. I will spend the whole fucking day with them. But I am very, very, very selective about it. You know? Because, honestly, you do me wrong, or you start causing problems, you gotta go. And it don't matter who you are. You know, like my brother, not on speaking terms with him because he keeps doing the same dumb shit over and over again at my expense. And that last time was the last time. You know, if he wants to hang out with me again, he's got to get clean and stay clean for a while. I'm done. Raindrop carbon fiber. Like, I'm going to have to look up raindrop carbon fiber. That is interesting. But only because I have made myself some raindrop Damascus. It didn't, the billet didn't work out, but I made it. From what I've been told, my brother lives like 10 minutes away. That's what I've been told. Um, I don't know what the hell he's doing. Um, it's probably been like a year, year and a half, something like that. Um, since uh, he got himself removed. You know, it's, it's not that I don't miss him. It's not that I don't want him around. I just refuse to be treated like that. Zero fucking tolerance. Oh, 
oh my god this right here this junction at the blade and the scales are starting to hot spot right here so damn bad this is getting really painful and there's a blister but i can't find a better way to hold this we might be moving on to something else Yeah, no, this thing just keeps uh keeps swinging and missing. Yeah, I so said the the ergos were bad to begin with, but I did not expect the problem to show up here like it has. You know, I don't think it was designed to do something like this, but this is how you test your ergos. Oh yeah, other knives that we tested, we tested one that I made with 1095 and one that I made with 01 tool steel. Those were the other ones I forgot about. If uh, if our homie is still in here that was asking. Which my edge on the 1095 wasn't great, like my edge profile. Uh, the grind wasn't great. And I don't think I got the heat treatment 100%. Like it took an hour before it went down. The 01 tool steel took like two hours before it wore out. So yeah, it's just... I, I don't think this design really got vetted before it got released at all. God, that is starting to hurt. Yeah, that's a blister. All right, there's a blister there, so. Yeah, I think we're done with this knife. I'm going to finish this piece of cardboard. We're going to strop it. And then we're going to switch over to the Terminus XR because I'm starting to blister. I can't hold this anymore. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to move over to the uh, Terminus XR. Um, yeah, there's uh, a couple of petrified fishes on my list that I want, but it's kind of, again, only so much money to go around and so many knives fighting for attention at once. another knock on that thing god i, I kind of wish i had an environment that would uh, justify carrying a fixed blade let's see we got a buck knives decatur right here that i don't care for that much that we can beat on or we can go for the Terminus XR. I will let y'all pick while I strop. And you know what? We're going to go through a five-stage dropping system. First, let's see how the edge do on some copy paper. So it's still cutting, but the cut's getting kind of ragged and a little bit rough. But let's see what we can do with a series of straps. A 
tell you what, we'll roll dice for it. Let's roll the die of fate. Finally have a use for this thing. Odd number. Terminus XR. Even number. Buck knives decator. Even number. Going for the decator. But we are trying to strap this thing up as far as it'll go and just see uh, what my system of straps can do. Because I just got the uh, diamond paste and the Timu strap to play with after I'm done with this one. All right, let's see how it cuts off of my old strop. That's damn near back to factory. Um, yeah, like again, for 120 bucks, the uh. WorkSharp Precision Adjust uh, Elite, I think. The Pro is the one that's got the digital uh, angle finder on it, I believe. But you don't really need all that. All right. So that strop did a great job with the uh, buffing compound on it. Let's see how we do with the uh, diamond paste. Okay, the, yeah, so I've got the mid-range. There's, there's one for like 70 bucks, and there's one for like 120 bucks. And at 120 bucks, you get the full set of stones. And, uh, you know, the, that one's the better value. Because if you buy the one for 70 and then buy the rest of the stones, you're in for more money than just buying the one that comes with the stones. Yeah, like for my cheap knives, I have no problem going to the uh, Ken Onion grinder and just freehanding it on the slack belt. You know, it's not going to look like a factory edge. It's not going to be the prettiest, but it will be effective. But on the nicer knives that cost a little bit more money, I'd rather be able to put a factory looking edge on it, only maybe sharper.
So we've gone from uh, 10 micron to 5 micron to 2.5 micron after using buffing compound. And if you didn't see the video for this, I got a, this drop right here and a whole bunch of diamond paste off of Timu for, uh, for 11 bucks. And I'm trying to experiment with that and see if I can get way better stropping off of that than uh, the buffing compound. Um, yeah, if you got to do a lot of work on an edge, then definitely the Ken Onion Grinder. Um, that thing does really good work. Um, I know if you probably practiced a lot, you could get a really clean factory looking edge off it, but you'd have to sharpen a lot of knives with it first. And I don't have a lot of knives like that that I want to sharpen. All right. What does that do to the edge? Oh, boy. Yeah, just the weight of the knife is carrying it through the cut. And then it gets far enough into the cut and uh, doesn't like finishing it. So yeah, um, diamond paste for the win. Like going through five stages of stropping, of course, does something for it. But Jesus, how sharp that thing got. It is a shame I hate this thing. All right, so we may end up having to get rid of this pocket clip. This thing sticks out really damn far. So that uh that may factor into how well this thing works. All right, let's get some of the cardboard the other knife didn't like out. Yeah, I may have to cut this in about an hour so I can go eat. All right, that was a really good slice. Y'all needed that. Well, if it was a flatter clip and it was a bit tougher, that'd be great. But the way this thing is set up, it at least in my environment, it grabs on stuff and bends out. Like, you can see how far I can bend that out with next to no pressure. Like, the steel on this is really weak. Um, it is bent all the way out to, like, here three times now. And uh, from a company like Bug Knives, that should not be a thing. But, oh, my God, that is so much more comfortable to cut with. We didn't even see how the edge is out of the box. It's basically on a factory edge. It's only cut a little bit of plastic off a pallet so far. So it's decent. Um, this thing is cutting so much easier. Like, it's not as much of a slicer as the other one was, other one was but it's a much uh, narrower blade this way so i think that's part of why it's having an easier time cutting and it doesn't hurt my hand all right so we got a very serviceable edge here and let me uh go online real quick and look and see what the blade steel is Sorry, right, bear with me. So 
So they're not saying what the blade steel is on Amazon. Oh, and it looks like they put a better pocket clip on it now. Okay, so this is saying 7CR13. Kathleen Smith, hello. Yeah, this is 7CR. Well, you just walked in, but we have rotated knives out. The knife that we started with it left a blister right here on my hand. My thingy hurts now, so we're cutting with the Buck Knives Decatur, which is a knife that I wanted to like, but it had too many problems. Pocket clips garbage, and the edges on this aren't broken down enough to come to carry comfortably in my waistband. So we're going to beat on a 7CR13 edge for a while. I mean, it's still a $35 knife, or at least it was when I bought it. They could have done a little better. So far, pocket clip's not a problem here. But oh, the video on that Sativian is going to be so unpleasant for that Sativian. Yeah, I'm going to put this over in the filming area just so I don't have to look for it later. Because, oh boy, I'm going to say many, many bad things about it. I will say... I will say right now that I'm glad that wasn't my first Sativian, or I would be highly upset with that entire brand off of that mess. Still disappointed, but oh, I would have been pissed. Oh man, this thing's slicing so much easier. But I, I think given that this is in the budget range, this was probably designed with dicing up cardboard in mind. Like I know this thing isn't really set up for a hard use environment. Yeah, I think, I think we'll curb this at around 8 o'clock. I got to go eat, and I am sore and tired. Um, well, that's part of why I got it, is it's very CEO-like, but I wanted the wood, uh, the wooden scales on it. And the edges on these aren't broken down at all. They're not rounded over or softened. They're just a... a hard almost 90 degree transition 
So in the waistband, it rubbed a lot of hot spots. Like it really did. Which that gives me an idea. I have got both versions of the CRKT CEO and the one without the flipper tab is definitely my least favorite of the two. So that might be put on the list for a, uh, for a, a live stream. There, cardboard player. There's a part of me that really wants to do a test cut with the SOG, but I don't want to uh, affect the edge any more than carrying it and using it. Very light use is already done. I know a single cut ain't much, but... Oh, okay, so... They were loose. Well, and that's the thing with my 110 that belonged to my uncle before he passed away. Somehow he loosened the blade up a lot in this thing so that you could uh, flick it open like that upside down. But that also introduced quite a bit of blade play. So, uh... How the hell did I do that? So like I can only flip this thing downwards like that once in a row, basically. Like I just did it on camera. Now I won't do it again. Oh my god. I have got a coworker that intentionally goes through and loosens his blades up until there's nothing but blade play. Like there might be one thread left hanging on on the pivot screw because he likes them like that. Like, bro, why are you trying to hurt me? Just knowing that knife is in the building upsets me greatly. Yeah, like, I, I would try to do something with that 110, but it's how my uncle left it before he passed away, so it's going to stay as is. Like, I wouldn't have even sharpened it, but you could already tell he had sharpened it on some kind of a belt grinder and did the same convex I do, so, like, no difference was made except I bet you I got it sharper than he ever did. I don't think he had the time or the patience for sharpening stones. Which I think he sharpened his on a 1x30. Um, which you can still totally rock out with. But yeah, I'm pretty sure if I got something with that kind of blade play in it, I would have sent it back and been like, hey guys, replace this thing. What the hell?
Um, I never developed any skills with freehand sharpening. Um, I never, uh, I never had good sharpening stones to begin with, but like when I had that bench made 9,000 and I was carrying that all the time, um, it took forever before I had to sharpen it because it was just too dull for anything. And uh, I had a rough gray sharpening stone that looked like a block of pumice. You know, the ones that come with the really, really cheap flea market survival knives. And I used that and a file to get it sharp again. And it worked. But, yeah, that, that wasn't the best way to go about it. And before that, I just sharpened things up on my bench grinder and then drag it across a piece of wood to knock the burr off and call it a day. And I could do okay with that. Like, it wasn't what you and I would call sharp now. But it was sharper than it was back then. Like, if I saw someone doing that to a knife now, I'd be like, sir, I'm calling the police. Like, do we have child protective services, but for knives? God, the last two or three Walmarts I've been by, they either have like, they got no knives on clearance. So that that would have been a good, I don't know, three, maybe four videos on what did I get on clearance at Walmart, you know? Yeah, I'd, I'm telling you right now, I'm so grateful and I'm thanking myself so much for buying the uh, WorkSharp Precision Adjust. Um, that thing makes it so easy. Like, I don't quite have my touch dialed in yet. Um, I need to play with it some more and really get to sharpening more knives on it um but it is so much better than trying to go at it with a, a stone for me and like i bought a lansky sharpening system online ages ago and it turns out a lansky sharpener is no good for pocket knives you can't really get in there without uh basically you're hitting the the clamp for the blade. You're not touching the edge of the blade at all with that thing on anything smaller than like a kitchen knife. Which, can't tell you how disappointed I was. And one of the little metal rods broke off that holds the stone anyways. Like... That Lansky was a big disappointment. Actually, I've given it some thought. When we do these live streams from now on, I think we're going to have two knives to pick from, and I'm going to roll the dice to see which one we run. Because, like, I can pick between the uh, first generation CEO and the Terminus XR for the next one. That's what we're going to do. We'll let the spirit of Gary Gygax guide us.
and that's something else that I could probably do is get a decent set of stones and do some videos on me learning how to sharpen on them. It's like, like all of us, I've got the general idea. You know, it's like porn when I was 14. I've watched it enough. I just haven't actually done it. Um, yes, you inadvertently inspired a new method. Um, I think we're going to go random choice and let the dice decide. It's the only hard part is I got to have like two knives picked out for each one now. Now, that being said, I don't think necessarily the channel is big enough for that to be a huge accomplishment, but if it ever does become a big channel, you'll know that you did that. Oh, really? Now that I've got the first half of the first pair picked out, I only got to pick one knife at a time anyways. Unless we have another catastrophic failure like the Sativian, then we may run into problems. You know, I have been responsible for enough safety meetings to feel that in my soul. So right now we're working with the uh, Buck Knives Decatur. And uh, I think this is 7CR15 MOV. Um, we were doing 14C28N on the Sativian ST155 here. But the ergos on this are so bad that I've got a blister right here from uh, two hours of cutting with it. So this thing is going bye-bye, and the video that I'm posting on this in a couple of days is going to be quite scathing. I already didn't like this knife before that. That just really took it to a whole new level. Now, just for demonstration, I did strop the hell out of this after all the cutting we did for two hours. And... uh She be sharp. She be sharp, sharp. Yeah. Horrible, horrible knife. So we're going to cut with this. In about 30 minutes here, I'm going to cut the live stream so I can go eat. No, the, the buck is okay. Um, there's a couple of things, some fit and finish stuff that I don't like, and I don't like the pocket clip. But it's not a terrible knife. Like, carry it in your pocket, not a problem. If you can live with the pocket clip being fragile. Not a problem. You know, and I'm tempted to take a look at the Ganzos that I have and see if I can steal a pocket clip that'll fit this. I'm not entirely sure that'll work, though. But I think we already know that 7CR could probably take the better part of three hours of cutting and still be okay enough until it's ready to strop. Yeah, we'll, we'll pull the plug on the stream at uh, about 30 minutes here so I can go eat and sit and dissociate for a while.
I've got a drill press. However, I don't do precision enough work to really make this do what I want it to. Because believe me, when I when I start making lanyard beads, that drill that drill press gets a lot of love. That's a, that's a bit of a loss right there, dude. Crap. Actually, the knife I'm carrying for review right now, um, the pocket clip is decent, but it's so damn small that I'm afraid I'm going to lose it. Yo, Rich, what's up? Rich, you missed out on it. Um, we started off with the Sativian ST-155. I already didn't like this knife, but after two hours, the ergos were so bad that it blistered me right here. Um, this thing is just straight trash all the way through. Um, I wish they would have used the blade steel on a good knife. I've actually got two drill presses. Uh, one came from my dad. Um, it's his old one. He upgraded into something ridiculous for a drill press. Um, the other one, the other one is operated off a foot pedal. Your on off switch is step on the pedal, which is phenomenal. But um, because I don't feel like adjusting the belts, that thing has one speed and it's something like a few thousand RPM insanely fast. Um, so the insanely fast drill press just has a uh, small buffing wheels on it for shining things up and by God, it works. I've lost a few knives just to them being misplaced around the house. Um, the one that really hurts is I had a, uh, a small Victorinox, a small Swiss Army knife. I mean, like, one of the smallest that they make. But that was my uncle's uh, groomsman's gifts for his wedding. And uh, that thing is long gone now. It did not make it out of the house through the course of the divorce. Um, so that's gone forever. Um well, the other drill press I got, that was like 70 bucks. The guy was just getting rid of it. Um, he was basically just selling a whole blacksmith shop. And my brother was interested in it and wanted to get started. So a couple hundred bucks for a, a brake rotor forge. Um, a basic uh, big-ass chunk of steel anvil. Um, a lot of supplies and all that. And uh, I helped him buy it, got him set up with that. And then uh, he never actually used it once he got it. That's a whole nother story. But I picked up a small 110 flex core welder for like a hundred bucks. It was a good brand. And uh, then uh, that drill press was like 70 bucks. The electro etching setup was just thrown in with the shop. Um, we scored some good deals that day. I'm pretty sure you would have heard about it if someone got hit by a Victorinox when the roller coaster stopped. And it was probably down there where the guys that worked there went looking for uh, looking for free stuff at the end of the night. God knows if I worked somewhere where there was a roller coaster every night, I'd be like, all right, roller coaster shut down. I'm going down to look for free stuff. Of course, now it'll be like free iPhones and um, AirPods and all that crap. Oh, damn. That is a tragic boat trip, sir.
Yeah, all the ones I've lost have been a combination of misplacing them and not recovering them during emergency moves because I made bad decisions about who I spent my time with. Boy, I tell you what, man, this, uh, Uh, you got to remember, like, if you're buying knives off Wish or Timu, like, you're already at least some kind of a knife guy, so more than likely it's going to be Smith & Wesson knives, almost entirely Smith & Wesson knives, or... Oh. You know, it's going to be Smith & Wesson, Browning, um, whatever the cheapest stuff at Walmart is. Stuff like that. Although, I think most theme parks, you aren't allowed to have knives. I have one knife, and I forget what it was now, but I was really attached to it. Like, I really liked it. Um, and we went to a concert in Atlanta. Um, it was a summer sanitarium. There's like, Corn, Kid Rock, System of a Down, Power Man 5000, and Metallica. And uh, I don't know how, but the security guards heard from, like, halfway across the parking lot. I'm like, shit, I didn't put my knife in the car. So they confiscated it at the, the gate, and I never saw it again. For the life of me, I can't remember what the hell it was that I had, but I no longer have it. And the concert sucked, too. Um, System of a Down shredded their set. They were awesome. Power Man 5000, they did fucking fantastic. Like, they're not my favorite band in the world, but they really, really put on a good performance. Um, saw Korn. Um, that's when things got weird. Um, Korn came out, and, like, I've seen video of their concerts. Those guys are active as shit. Like, um, you know, is it? shit, I, I lost track of the name I was looking for. Um, Jonathan Davis. Jonathan Davis is normally a hell of a performer, but this time they were all standing still like statues, and it sounded like they were playing a CD off stage. And then you, you wouldn't get like the uh, right. Um, I mean, I wasn't actually going to stab Lars Ulrich, but it's not out of the question. Um, but I was gonna say. Yeah, they were standing still like statues, and like you didn't hear the first 15 seconds or the last 15 seconds of a song. They just cut in and cut back out, and uh, it was really weird. Kid Rock did the same thing. At least he was walking around on stage and doing stuff. Um, we got so fed up with the environment and everything else that we left before Metallica showed up, and I wish I would have stayed because James Hetfield hurt his back, so they had Kid Rock stepping in for vocals, Jonathan Davis, um, Surge, like everybody stepped in and did a song or two. I wish I would have seen that, um, but I mean, realistically, the concert wasn't great. And the thing is, is uh, that was my stoner days, and at that point, we were in a dry spell. We could not find any chuckle brush at all. And, uh, I was going to bring rolling papers. I was like, you know, part of me is like, uh, maybe someone will need rolling, rolling papers and we can smoke. And I was like, nah, that's stupid. Um, who the hell would do that? Who the hell brings chuckle brush and no rolling papers? Like, seriously, that is some unprepared ass shit. And twice, twice, I got stopped and asked at the concert. Hey, man, you got rolling papers? We'll smoke with you if you do. You talk about being pissed off. I mean, totally pissed off. I'm still mad about it. And I've been clean for 14 years. Yeah, it was... Well, one of the things that happened, too, is you had two kids in two separate locations break their neck. Um, one of them was in a mosh pit, and he just went way overboard. One kid fell off of a speaker stack that he climbed. And that was enough where everybody toned everything down immediately. Like, me and my friends, like, we were just kind of 
out there like in a in an area away from everybody else and we just started shoving each other around like a like a weenie hut junior mosh pit and people in the crowd are like grab like not security people in the crowd were grabbing us and pulling us out like hey man stop it it's like what the fuck is this shit like nobody was throwing punches we weren't being super aggressive we're just you know kind of shoving each other around a little bit it was like three people and like people in the crowd are grabbing us and yanking us out it's like what the fuck is this shit but you also had everyone from like guys like us that were like 19 years old you know there to enjoy it yeah like middle-aged biker looking dudes you had guys that were there for the dad rock um like it was a weird mix of uh, of an audience and of course we had tickets for shit seats and uh i already knew my luck trying to sneak into the front row or out onto the floor because it was the georgia dome too so like you're in the seats back in the end zone trying to watch somebody playing on the 50 yard line like just and i don't really do concerts because i don't do i don't do crowds and like you know i i appreciate what's happening there but it's like trying to walk back and forth through that crowd that's like standing room only and stand around and listen to some music for a few minutes and then try to move again is not my idea of a good time um i like having my freedom of movement and the ability to leave a situation should i so desire um which also makes blade show a challenge because it's like you're squeezing through and you're trying to make yourself as narrow as possible um the loud noises I'm fine with. Um, crowds I'm not as bad with as I used to be, but, you know, the flashbacks from the shit I had to survive in high school, being in a crowd, like, I, it's hard for me to watch my own back in a crowd like that. You know, and, and that's the thing is, like, I'm always watching my own six um, just to make sure something bad isn't about to happen. And crowds like that, you can't do that. You know, I'm not sure why with Blade Show, but I'm a bit more, uh, bit more comfortable there. I don't know if it's just like an armed society is a polite society, but like you really can't fuck around and then find out in that kind of environment. You're gonna leave with a couple holes in you. And like I've got friends at Blade Show, I've got people there. I got, I got one friend. I only see him there. I'd love to see him outside a blade show. Like, um, you know, we, we talk all the time on, you know, messenger, like, you know, we're always around on Facebook. Um, I was part of a podcast he did for a while until my work schedule got in the way. But the only time I see him in person is blade show. Oh Yeah. No, I am also six foot four. I am no longer 245 pounds, but I'm somewhere around probably 215, 220 now. I haven't checked in forever. But yeah, trying to think skinny doesn't necessarily work. The, the big upshot, though, is I can see over everybody's heads to every booth that I want to go to once I figure out what the fuck the booth is. It's like the map that they give you at the start is useless because you have no frame of reference for like what end of the room the map starts in and ends in. You know, I, I got the ones that, uh, you know, I, I got the booths that I do want to kind of go see. Like I want to go see what Benchmade's up to. I want to go see what CRKT is up to. Um, you know, I, I keep hoping CRKT will get back in bed with, uh, Ed Van Hoy or start doing those really weird designs, you know, and, and of course they never do, but they also never have anything on sale. It's all stuff that's 
you know, wired to the table, kind of like the cell phones at Metro PCS when you're trying to figure out what you want to buy. Um, and none of it's for sale. And then, uh, like, I'll drop by and check out Boker. I'll drop by and check out uh, Civivi, of course. Um, and, yes, I also do kind of want to go to Japan just to see. Um, uh, my buddy from Blade Show, Akil, um, he is half Indian. Like, his mom's from India and his dad's from uh, North Africa. And he is also six foot four. And he been going to the gym and getting swole. But I would love to take him. My big brown, beautiful buddy Akil, take him with me through Japan. See how the crowd reacts. To, like, you see how the citizens react to that shit. That would be amazing. That's, he's like one of the most polite people on the planet. One of the most friendly, respectful people on the planet. So it's not like we'd really be out there causing trouble. It would just be people freaking out seeing the two of us walking around. Like, a lot of times I go with a buddy of mine, and he is in there to check out, like, way higher-end stuff than I am. And, like, he's, like, hitting up the SE booth and buying, like, Six Blaze and Ulta Clips and all this stuff. And, like, so I'll follow him for around for a while and then get separated and find my buddy Akil and his friends and hang out with those guys. And I'll go see my friends that were on Forge and Fire. Um, but normally I'm only there for one day, so I can't really get everything in. But this year, I put in the time off request early enough in the year where you're guaranteed your time off request is going to be approved. And uh, so I've got like a full week for Blade Show. And so I do the three days and still have like a couple days to, you know, get myself right to deal with the crowd and the anxiety and all that. And then a couple of days to decompress after I get done before I got to go back to work. Yeah, it wouldn't be hard to guess that I'm from the U.S., but a keel be a different story. Now, if I spent a lot of time out in the sun beforehand all the Native American DNA would kick in. And then I would be like, I, whenever I stay out in the sun, especially when I was working outside, um, there's like a lot of Native American in my family, a lot of First Nations. And uh, I would tan out darker than most of my Mexican friends and the Mexican guys I was working with. And uh I cannot tell you, being in this part of the state and being in this part of the country, how many times I got stopped by the police and just had my car searched for no good reason other than I was a bit too dark for their comfort. And, uh, like, one point I went to McDonald's and I went with my coworker whose name is Telesforo Berrientos. Never forget that guy. He was from Acapulco. And his accent was so thick, his translator would need a translator. I walk into McDonald's standing right next to this man. And the girl at the counter looks at me and fires off about 20 seconds of Spanish while I'm standing there trying to figure out what the fuck just happened. And uh, <laughs> I look at her, I look at Telesporo, and I look again. I'm like, I beg your pardon? She's like, oh, God, I'm so sorry. And then looks at Telesporo, and she's just like, welcome to McDonald's, can I take your order? Like, what the fuck just happened? But like, if I tanned out that dark and went in there with him to Japan and walked around, I cannot imagine how the locals would react to that shit. Yeah, that I can't offer a whole lot of help with. I'm not like a country onomist or anything. All right, it is damn near 8 o'clock. I think we're going to check to see how the edge handled 45 minutes of cutting. Strop the hell out of this thing.
And then I'm gonna go eat and chill. What the hell am I hung up on? Son of a bitch. There you are. That was stupid. Yeah, like, from what I know, on my dad's side of the family, we have a direct lineage from Chief Joseph of the Nez Pierce, which uh, that guy is histor historically significant. Um, and then, like, I had a grandmother who was full Cherokee, and uh, I don't know about the rest of that part of the family. Like, I don't know much about my family history at all. On my mom's side of the family, I genuinely have no idea. However, they had a propensity to generate redheads. As you can tell by my arm hair and my propensity for tanning out, I did not inherit that. Okay, so I mean, this thing really didn't change much from factory. So, that's also cool. Let's drop the pants off of this thing and see how sharp we can get it. Oh my god. I will say right now, sitting hunched over this table for this long does a number on your back. Holy shit balls. Like, even if I could put myself in a nicer setup for doing all this, I'm not sure I would. Just to maintain some continuity. Like, one thing I hate is, you know, YouTube channels where you get this whole vibe set up and, you know, you're really comfortable with it. The videos, the, the, the background's the same. A lot of the things are the same. You know, same shop, same tables, all that. And then at some point they get big enough that, like, they'll move into a gigantic studio or a big-ass warehouse or something like that. And all of a sudden the vibe totally changes and it just feels like another mass market video. And you're just like, well, you done ruined it. Fucker. You know, Alex Steele is one of the few that actually survived doing that. You know, I, I miss the vibe at the old uh, Baker Street Forge that he had when he was like, you know, a kid and hadn't even turned 21 yet. Um, I miss that old vibe, but at least when he moved to the new shop, he kind of kept the thing going and even though he's completely changed formats from daily videos to like you know 15 part series as it takes six months to finish you know he's still entertaining to watch he's still good at youtube like Kubi's garage i'm waiting to see uh i'm waiting to see whether or not his channel survives the uh the transition you know, he just bought like a huge uh, property and a huge barn and all that. And I think him and like three other car YouTubers got divorced like pretty much at the same time. So I don't know how much that's going to have an effect. Which that was weird. Just everybody that I watched on YouTube got divorced in like the same six week period, basically. If I'm not mistaken, hey, nice. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Tavarish is also divorced now. 
which I don't know, like, because he had just bought, like, a big-ass house that he was in the process of fixing back up. You know, he's working on that $2 million car. Um, yeah, and just... You know, divorces always suck. Um, even when you're the one that decides it's time to get a divorce, it still sucks. It's still painful. Um, but I, I can't imagine, like, you're going in on a... You know what? 100% of divorces start with marriage. But, uh, you know, it was just kind of weird that, like, him and a couple other people got divorced at the same time that we're in the same little crew. Like, what the hell, guys? And, like, I know, like, it's it's not, there's no good reason for them to, like, go into the why, where, and how with a public audience. Like, that's not cool. But you, you do got to wonder, though, what the hell happened there? You know, like, I decided it was time for divorce in my marriage, and at that point, like, I was 100% done, and I wanted out no matter what. And uh, I managed to basically set everything up where it was an amicable, amic amicable divorce. Um, you know, I got custodial guardianship of the kids. Um, you know, I, I offered to leave her with the house so that she had somewhere to stay. Um, you know, was, I didn't want to stay in the house anymore. It was like digging around in my own grave after everything that I went through at her uh, because of her. And uh, it was going to be a whole ass house for $500 a month. And it would have kept her in the area where she had all of her friends and everything, but she was involved with, with a dude. And they basically took off immediately and went and stayed with a friend of ours and then it kind of went downhill from there as far as the house is concerned and so I was just like you can have it yeah I mean that's the thing is being stuck in a shitty uh, marriage shitty relationship far worse than being alone like the thing is given the kind of damage I was carrying around myself um one of the things one of the things that kept me in that marriage for so long after I needed to leave was just the fear of being alone and not having somebody else for, you know. I know myself. I average about 5 5ish years between partners. You know, if a relationship ends, I'm going to be single for around 5 years. And I didn't want to deal with that. It's part of why I stayed in that marriage for so long. You know, but I think when that marriage ended, it took about four, four and a half years of work before I really got comfortable being alone. And I was like, I was happy being alone. And that lasted about four months before the wife dropped out of, out of the sky into my lap, basically out of nowhere. Oh my God. I love what I've got with these straps. Holy crap. That cut didn't go so good. I love what I've done with these drops. Holy crap. Okay. Gentlemen, I believe it is time for us to part ways. And I will catch you on my next live stream if I am closing at work. But I'm closing at work um, after my next day off. Um, yeah. So if I have a day off and then I'm closing the next day, I can do a later afternoon stream and possibly you know get you guys back in here again. So I will make an announcement when I got that figured out. Um, but knock off, you're not wrong. Uh, just about all the relationships I've had ended up with uh, being cheated on. So I know that feeling. Uh, the last two relationships, that didn't happen, and it was life-changing. Um, of course, the second of those two being my current marriage. But yes, you guys have a good night. 
I will see you again soon. And yeah, thanks for looking at my crap. <laughs>